This video is made possible by the following sponsors. Make sure to check out their products as well as the rest of my gear in the description below. Hey guys, Jimmy here and welcome back to iRacing for another video. In today's video, I'm going to be driving a car that I've been looking forward to ever since it was announced, the Audi R18 LMP1 Hybrid. This car was released a couple of days ago alongside the Porsche 919, which I'll probably do a video on at some point. But the Audi is the car that myself and of course Mr. Stephen Bailey have been most looking forward to. To date, this and the 919 are the only cars that have a proper fully functioning hybrid system in any sim. There is a sort of version of a hybrid system over in the Seto Corsa, but this one is just so much more detailed and so much more in depth. I mean, I'm gonna need an engineering degree to try and understand it. Whilst the Audi isn't the prettiest car in the world, it's definitely a function over form car. It's been made slightly better by our good friend, Sam, AKA Amphobius, who sent us this awesome DHR Doug Henson Racing livery, which makes this car makes it almost appealing. To put this car through its paces, I'm going to be indulging a little bit of a fantasy of mine, which is to drive uh, a modern day prototype at Le Mans. Where else would you drive one of these cars after all? So I'm going to pop on the VR, get into the rather cramped Audi R18 cockpit and see what it's like to drive a modern day LMP1 at Le Mans. Never thought I'd say this whilst playing iRacing. Well, here we are then low down inside the cockpit of the Doug Henson Racing Audi R18 LMP1. I want to show you guys something very quickly just before we pull away. I'm going to go through to the in-car adjustment menu. Just look at that. Look at that. <laughs> now, I'm a bit of a pleb when it comes to setup, and uh, I think I've got some learning to do. Just a little bit. Intimidating setup aside, though, let's go for a drive. Pit limiter on, and back off again. And where we go then? Up onto the circuit in our Audi R18 in iRacing. This is so weird driving this car and this sim. I never thought we get to drive a proper LMP1 over in iRacing, but here we are and driving at Le, uh, Le Mans, no less, down the S's. Uh, warm up lap first time around. Hybrid's got to sort of figured it, itself out. I do have manual deploy set on my wheel. Uh, so we do have that in case we need to, a little bit more juice, but otherwise we should be okay. I'm running a fairly low down for setup. Uh, Bailey and I have been semi working on the setup for this thing. I say semi because not really. Uh, but I'm running a uh, setup with about half the downforce uh, of the one he's using right now. So it's quite leery, but very fast in a straight line. Uh, aiming to get to just above 320Ks on the straight if possible. Uh, of course, these things uh, in real life did about 330 k's. I think there's still some setup stuff we aren't quite understanding for it, but it's about getting there. And I have to say, the first thing I thought when I jumped into this car is that this car felt familiar. Felt like I had driven something like this before. And it's the first car in iRacing that I can actually relate to another sim. I can relate it to the Assetto Corsa 919. And that isn't a bad thing. I'm sure there are some iRacing purists saying, oh, how dare you compare our sim to anything else? But what I'm saying is, in my experience of iRacing, as I run wide out of the second chicane, um, it handles like nothing else. But it's starting to handle a bit like, a bit more like the other sims now. So I think they're making a little bit of progress somewhere in the tyre department. Now, like the 919, this car is quite unique in the way it handles. It is, uh, well, really, it's a rear-wheel drive car with front-wheel drive hybrid. What that means is that the corners will be smashed the throttle like this. We get four-wheel drive, so great traction, decent corner and grip as well. But as soon as the hybrid turns off, we go back to being a rear-wheel drive peasant. Um, makes them very interesting. Does mean as well we're having a big moment. You can pretty much hit the old, uh, hit the old boost to sort yourself out. But with the traction control in this car, you don't really have those moments very often. Coming down to Indianapolis now, we're going to go down to fifth gear. We're on that out lap still, so I'm taking it fairly slowly. Uh, my best time round here so far at Le Mans, for some sort of context, on a uh, on the lowest track temperature, is a 3.24.5. Uh, I know Bailey's done a 19 somewhere, but I'm not Bailey. A lot more time in it, definitely, but uh, it's about being smooth round here and being consistent, of course. Eventually, we're going to have the 24 hours of Le Mans around here. And uh, that's going to be more about just being consistent than anything else. I love the flywheel sound. This sounds absolutely great. Big fan of it. The actual diesel sound, um, I think it sounds a little bit off and it's a bit quiet. 
compared to the hybrid sound. But in the real in real life, I went to see uh, Le Mans in 2015. These diesels were very quiet, so definitely a possibility. That's just how it is. Anyway, let's wind ourselves up now for a proper lap. So cool coming in and seeing the Ferris wheel there. I still underneath that, but I never went on it, which is a shame. Through the Ford chicanes. There we go. And let's start our fast lap. We punch it out of the last corner. There is the start finish line there. And coming on to our fast lap now up into 50, which will stay in until T1. Got to be careful of the brake on the right hand side there. It gets very bumpy on the right. So we sort of brake a bit earlier in a straight line. Down to second gear, turn it in. Tracks can drive to kick in a bit there because a bit severe on my turn in. Then trust the four wheel drive on the exit. Downhill now. Watch out for this bump on the right uh, going on to the Bugatti circuit. Very easy to actually spin the car on that if the car isn't set up right. Fourth gear through the S's. Over the hump. Use all the road on the left. Now touch ruse. Back down the fourth. Throw it to the inside. Trust it will stick a little bit tardy on the entry there. Now I use a squirt of hybrid here to get up to about 280 k's. But I feel like the normal hybrid deployment's a little bit slow. But anyway now. Now we sit here and watch the speedo climb. You see it's on the wheel. You can see it's down there as well. Getting up to 200 mile an hour just about now. 320 k's on our own. Looking for our braking market. It's about there. Careful on the exit on the way down. I braked a bit too late there. Just felt I managed to save it. You can hear that when you uh, when you lock up the brakes, you can hear the fly, you can hear the uh, the hybrid sound sort of react to it. I think it's the flywheel on this one. Um, someone will tell me different if I'm wrong. I'm sure. But that's a really good indicator to know that you're about to have a massive accident. Not a great uh, first run through there, but we'll see if we can do better from the second chicane. Again, looking for our braking marker, which is about here. Throw it in. Second gear. Focus on getting a good exit. Ah. Trash control again there, having to save me. Again, it's a quick burst of the hybrid dead to bring us up a couple of Ks. Really does you good to deploy the hybrid on a tight corner coming onto a long straight. That's the best place you can deploy it. The Mont gearing is very, very, very long around here. I'm not really a fan of the gearing of this car. It's very hard to set something up. Oh, we've got on the bump there. That's the second time I've done that. I did that in practice as well. And the second time I somehow managed to, to, to catch on to it. But the braking in this car, you have to be quite soft. Uh, no ABS in this car. So it's all down to your uh, left foot to, or right foot, depending on how you brake, to manage that braking into the corner. Very easy to walk up. Once you walk up on this thing, there isn't really much return. So it's good to try and bring that back. Now, through Indy, I tend to just sort of blend on the way in, try and carry speed through the actual left-hander here. Very easy to go wide there. See, a lot of people go off there in practice and down to first gear for our Nage. I love doing this in VR. So much visibility. So much better than doing it on a single screen. On a single screen, you have maybe, I don't know, 50% of this visibility, maybe even a bit less. So cool seeing the mirrors there either side as well and of course seeing just the hints of the DHL livery there. Now for the Porsche Curves fifth gear, bring it into the apex now. This is where the low downforce really starts to bite us because the car, I can feel it, it's wiggling around at the back. So I'm being very soft and very chill with my uh, with my inputs which is difficult for me given that I'm, a, oh, I'm not the smoothest driver in the world. Bit wide there, lucky not to get the off track on the exit there the Porsche Curves. Now coming up to the chicane once more. You can be quite aggressive through here, but I'm being a bit, a bit careful. I'm going to try for one more lap, I think, because I'm not quite satisfied with that one. Let's see what that one was. That was a uh, 3.24.2, so actually my fastest time yet so far, which means there's definitely more time to find. Let's see if we can get a 23 for the end of the video, shall we? A bit cleaner through the uh, first chicane this time anyway. Again, you can really just step on the front like that. They use a lot of the exit. Such a cool sensation going down these curves in VR. Wish I could more accurately show it to you guys. I'm going to try and keep fourth through here instead of going down to third. I'm going to hold fourth for Touch Rouge. Try and get a better run through here this time. That's a bit better. A little bit, uh, little bit spooky on the entry there. It's very easy to get an off track there and get a slow down the straight. And the slow downs on the mall are really unforgiving. Already up to 310 k's. That little squirt of hybrid was just what I needed. I love that management aspect as well. Although I will say it's quite hard to keep track how much hybrid you have left. I'll try and show you on the second straight how we see it. Oh, much better for the first chicane this time. Again, you just rely on that four-wheel drive and that trash control out of there. So. 
To see the hybrid in this, you have to go to the, uh, where is it? I missed it there. You have to go to the in-car adjustment menu. You can see it at the top there. Battery charge and deployment. I've used 27% of my deployment this lap. I've got 61% battery charge at the moment. So you can see it's quite hard to, uh, quite hard to keep track of. I'm really hoping that iRacing either release something that we can use for that or maybe just uh, break immersion slightly and put it on the wheel because it's really hard to keep an eye on that while you're going round. Let's get rid of this hard. I don't like having it up in the videos. I like to have just, just the speed down the bottom so you guys can see it. Feels like a much better lap this time. Let's try and have a little bit less drama going into uh, the Mulsanne corner, shall we? A bit better. Keep it in second. Go for the apex. There's the exit there. Bit wide in the exit, but off track, so we aren't going to keep it. Okay, just a little squirt of hybrid to bring us up to speed. Oh, I just love driving this combination. It feels so right. I'm almost sad that I can't do the longer races in VR because I would just want to do this. There's nothing quite like being in VR at Le Mans on a laser scan Le Mans in a blooming R18. Oh, man. Nothing wrong with that sentence. Second gear. A lot in the front on the way out. There's still a lot of places for me to improve. But I'm still learning. I love that I want to learn with this car. I want to learn what everything does. And that's so cool. Because I'm not usually someone who's... My, uh, I don't, my mind isn't really uh, tuned that way. You know, I just like driving the things usually. But I want to learn how to make this thing fast. That's going to be a really cool experience. Right, Porsche curve. Let's see if we can smash it again. We did okay for here last time. This gear, use the curve on the inside. That's better. Try and carry the speed through. Get very close. This wall on the right. Oh, that comes up quickly, especially in VR. For the last curb, take fourth gear. Careful on this exit here, so where you get the off track. On the throttle, there you go, a bit sideways out of there. Felt still pretty quick, I think it's going to be a, a quicker time. Got to make sure I just don't mess up these last couple of chicanes now. Very easy to do that if you're not careful. Really attack those chicanes, and you have to be so slow for this last one because the uh, curves are so high. There you go, let me use that last bit of hybrid if you've got any. Across the line, what was that time? A 323.4, nice, a PB on video, I'm happy with that. But guys, this has been the Audi R18 LMP1. I love this car. I'm really, really looking forward to racing this in the uh, new series and I racing the uh, one that pretty much uh, has a WEC style format to it with classes, etc. You guys are joining too. And uh, again, my preference out of the two LMP1s is definitely this one, but you may have different uh, preferences based on your driving style but guys if you enjoyed that video make sure to hit the like button if you really enjoyed it hit subscribe to be notified of future videos again a big thank you to sam for doing this rad delivery take care have an awesome day see you all next time